uh, for a very nice uh, illustrative uh, talk. Uh, we'll move on to the next talk uh, by Dr. Sajish Menon uh, on spinal sagittal balance measurements for surgical planning. Uh, now we will see the, how we can measure the sagittal balance here, uh, which are the uh, factors you have to take into account. So one thing you have to understand here is that I'll, there is a difference between balance and alignment. Balance is a dynamic state of equilibrium that results in a stable position. Balance required uh, for stable stance and for minimizing energy expenditure in upright posture. On the other hand, alignment of the spine is a static parameter based upon the standing radiograph and a measurable goal for surgical reconstruction. Actually, if you uh, we are measuring the alignment rather than balance because radiological measurement is uh, radiologically we can uh, not uh, it is difficult to measure balance. Uh, the impact of sagittal plane alignment on the treatment of spinal disorder is also critical. That's why we are going to measure it. A failure to recognize this malalignment in a sagittal plane can have a significant consequence for the patient in terms of pain and deformity. And one should have a good understanding of the principles of the sagittal balance, which, which is vital to achieve optimum outcome when treating spinal disorders. And first and foremost thing is to, uh, for the measurement of the alignment, sagittal alignment, alignment of the spine uh, is measured in a standing radiograph. And the measurement of the sagittal alignment requires visualization of the spine from the cranial center mass to the femoral heads. And if possible, the lower limb also should be included uh, to dictate, to uh, compensatory mechanism by the flexion as is in this uh, X-ray. Uh, spinal sagittal balance can be grouped into global alignment, regional alignment, and segment alignment. Global alignment uh, uh, assesses the spinal alignment as a whole, which is measured by the uh, by the relationship of C7 or T1 to the posterior margins of the sacrum. And the three metrics which are commonly used for this uh, global alignment measurement are C7 sagittal vertical axis, T1 sag uh, sagittal tilt, and T1 pelvic angle. SVA or the sagittal vertical axis defined as the sagittal offset of a plumb line dropped from the C7 to the uh, to the sacrum, and depending on where it is falls uh, falls and its uh, accepted range for a normal asymptotic patient is four centimeter, depending on where it falls in front or back. This can be uh, uh, categorized positive, neutral, and negative. If it falls uh, anterior, it is positive, and uh, uh, vice versa, posterior, it, uh, it, it is said to be negative. Uh, however, one should always remember that SVA can be affected by patient position and pelvic rotation. Then coming to the T1 sagittal angle, T1 sagittal angle is the angle subtended by a vertical line drawn from the center of the femoral head to the, to the another line from the center of femoral head to T1. And this should be somewhere around zero. Uh, and the third one is T1 pelvic angle. The, uh, that is drawn a uh, subtended by a line drawn from the center part of the uh, sacrum, uh, superior in plate of the sacrum to the T uh, and another line drawn uh, from the femoral head to T1 and it should be less than 40 degrees. If you compare between the, all the three parameters, C7 sagittal vertical axis has a significant limitation because it requires calibrated films to get accurate measurements in millimeters. How, uh, however, the T1 sagittal tilt and T1 pelvic angle are angular metrics which is therefore independent of calibration of the films that means the magnification factor will not affect if you take an angle but in case of uh, linear measurements the, the you should take magnification into account then we will come to the region alignment parameters. There are two parameters very commonly used is lumbar lordosis and the thoracic kyphosis. Lumbar lordosis angle is measured uh, between the upper end plate of L1 and uh, sacred end plate of S1 and normal values is somewhere between 40 to 60 degrees. And thoracic kyphosis is the measure, measured as the angle between T4 upper end plate and T2 lower end plate by the COPS method and normal value is about 30 degrees. Then we will coming to the spinal pelvic balance. The pelvis is the cornerstone of the spinal alignment. We all uh, know that. 
subject to the abnormal sacro pelvic morphology therefore seems to predispose to altered mechanical stress in the lumbar spine and lumbar sacro junction and could be <coughs> at a higher risk of presenting the uh, presenting or progressing the spondylolisthesis uh, for the spinal pelvic balance we can measure three parameters pelvic incidence sacro slope and pelvic tilt pelvic is uh, incidence is a fixed anatomical parameters it is measured by my line drawn from the mid part of the sacrum to the femoral head and the another lie uh, perpendicular to the uh, perpendicular uh, to uh, to the sacral end plate and that should subsequent a normal uh, angle uh, between this line is taken as pelvic incidence angle and the normal value is 51 plus, uh, plus 9 plus or minus 9 degree Uh, second is a sacral slope it is again the angle subtended by the vertical line through the uh, sacral end plate superior end plate and the horizontal line drawn across uh, the sacral end plate from the midpoint normal value is given as 40 plus or minus 9 degrees that is the angle then pelvic tilt third measurement of the sacro pelvic measurement is a pelvic tilt pelvic tilt is defined as the angle between the vertical line drawn from the femoral center part of femoral to the sacral mid part of the superior end plate of the sacrum and a vertical uh, line drawn from the femoral head uh, the pt qualify the pelvic rotation around the femoral head which is establish a compensatory mechanism against spinal positive malalignment and its normal value is 11 degrees as our dr salman also mentioned there is a the geometric relationship between P, uh, pi pt and ss pi is equal to uh, pi is the sum of pt and ss that means a change in one of the parameters affect the other measurements and the overall alignment of the sacro pelvis a, other, uh, a novel concept a recently developed concept is pi minus ll uh, lumbar loaders matching concept pi minus ll uh, quantifies the match between the pelvic morphology and the lumbar curve using the pi minus ll con, uh, con, uh, said a pi ll more than 10 threshold was identified as spino pelvic sagittal re, that uh, should consider as a spino pelvic sagittal realignment goal so if that is overshooting more than 10 degree uh, by this uh, uh, degree that is called a pi minus ll mismatch and the uh, and that should be corrected uh, when you consider for the surgical correction then one should also remember the compensatory mechanism can happen then uh, that can be uh, uh, that can mask the alignment uh, uh, malalignment also uh, malalignment of the pelvis and the spine so assessment of the uh, compensatory mechanism is also very important the two most commonly uh, done uh, method is knee flexion angle the as you can see the subcenter by uh, the angle subcenter by the vertical line along the femur uh, femur femur and the tibia and the pelvic tilt the difference of vertical line drawn from the sen- uh, posterior most part of this uh, superior and place sacrum to the uh, to the angle coming on to few examples you can see that this patient all these lines are drawn this is the sva uh, the all the pi ll and sacral slopes are uh, not measured here so Uh, you can see uh, if you measure the uh, svi uh, is le- uh, is le- actually less than 4 cm lumbar lordosis is also measured is 40 pa minus ll less than 10 uh, that means it's a well balanced patient let us see this patient uh, we uh, the, all the uh, lines are drawn so here you can see that pa minus ll is des- less than 10 degree global alignment parameter is done by the sva which is less than um, 4 cm that is good pelvic tilt is 30 degree that means there is uh, pelvic malalignment but it is compensated on the on the third case like this uh, you can see that pa ll uh, angle is more than 30 degree sv is far anterior about 9.5 uh, cm pelvic tilt uh, uh, more than 40 degree so it is uh, patient has a pi ll mismatch as well as a global malalignment 
another example of a 51 year old woman with a double major curve uh, you can see the pelvic incidence uh, the sv is uh, less uh, less than 4 uh, 4 cm pelvic incidence uh, is uh, to uh, pa minus L, ll is 10 and pelvic tilt is 20 so it is a well compensated patient uh, patient Another patient, patient has a thoracic and lumbar curve greater than that degree. There is a coronal uh, myelin also. PA, uh, PA minus LL is 26. Pelvic tilt is 20, uh, 24. SV of 5 centimeter. So patient has a PALL mismatch and a global myelin because it is more than 4, uh, 4 centimeter. So these are the normal values given for the sagittal alignment parameters. Uh, coming on uh, to the summarize the things, uh, proper imaging and standardized positioning radiographs are fundamental component of the sagittal plane and analysis. And assessment of the spinal pelvic harmony, PA minus LL mismatch concept is very important. And loss of lumbar lodosis is one of the main drivers of sagittal plane de deterioration. Patient with the loss of uh, lumbar lodosis of more than 10 degree in relation to their pelvic incidence angle should be uh, should undergo further clinical evaluation and assessment of the daily function and disability. Uh, analysis of compensatory mechanisms is very important for, for a successful realignment plan, uh, which should not uh, rest, uh, not only restore the uh, spinal pelvic relationship, but it should also reset the compensatory mechanism, which are energy drainers and affect the patient's quality of life. <sighs> Sagittal alignment is, uh, is not restricted to deformity patient. That is a very important point. Uh, the respect in the sagittal plane is not restricted to the major deformity procedures, but should also be considered even in a minor interventions like one-level vertebral stabilizations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sajesh. Very, very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Sajesh. Very good. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir.